All right, lab students. Um, what I want to do here is I want to add another um, small video to supplement the buffer lab that you folks are going to be doing this coming Wednesday. So if you watch Dr. Shane's video, what you'll see is he got through the calculations for part one, which was actually establishing the original buffer solution. So what you did there was you had to calculate the concentrations of a conjugate acid base pair required to prepare the buffer. And then from there, you had to actually calculate the amounts of each reagent that would be required to prepare the buffer. So we want to move on now to part two, which is actually something we're going to do calculations wise in the lab. So I thought a video might be in order to help us to understand that. All right, so that's the goal. So our goal in here, as I mentioned, is to calculate how to change the pH of the buffer solution that we've already prepared and calculated out in part one. So just a quick review here. As in part one, what we want to do is to use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which is the standard go-to equation that we always use when we describe or prepare a solution that we know is an acid-base buffer solution. And here's the Henderson-Hasselbach equation written out here. Okay, you should be familiar with it from lecture. It says that the pH of the buffer that you want to prepare is equal to the pKa of the acid part of the buffer plus the base 10 log of the ratio of the concentration of the base part of the buffer to the concentration of the acid part of the buffer. All right. In our particular example, just continuing on um, with the example that's given in your lab handout, the acid part of the buffer is the weak acid nitrous acid, HNO2, and the base part of the buffer would be the conjugate base of that acid, which is the nitrite ion, okay? Now, just to remind ourselves of this, when we're talking about a conjugate acid base pair, we can actually write that in terms of an association reaction of, say, the, or of the acid here. So HNO2 is my acid. I'm going to let it dissociate in water. And all these states are going to be aqueous unless I say otherwise. And we'll come to equilibrium with the products of the reaction, which are going to be the conjugate base, which is NO2 one minus. And we're also going to end up um, protonating the water, which gives us hydronium ion, which of course this makes this an acidic solution. All right, so again, if this is going to be the weak acid, all right, then it turns out the nitrite is going to be the conjugate base of that weak acid. In other words, it's just the deprotonated version of the acid. So we have a conjugate acid base pair. And as we know, that's what's required to make a buffer. We need to have some mixture of a conjugate acid base pair in solution. So there's our pair. All right. And you know from part one, the reason why we chose this pair is because the pKa of HNO2 is very close to the target pH that we wanted, which was, I believe, a pKa of three. So again, if we want to just fill in the pKa here, and this was done in part one, that's the pKa or the negative log of the Ka of HNO2 which turns out to be 3.39, okay? And you can verify that from part one. All right, so in our situation here, our goal in part two is to change the pH of the buffer. And this is the buffer that we made in part one. Okay, so that's gonna be our starting point. And we want to make it a little more acidic. We want to change the pH of the buffer from the original target of 3.00 down to 2.80. Okay, so we want to drop the pH of the buffer just a little bit. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, the instructions tell us that we're going to do it by adding a strong acid. And that makes sense if you think about it. If you put a strong acid in the solution, you're going to make the solution more acidic. Okay, so that means we're going to lower the pH. All right, so in our case, the strong acid that's assigned to us is 12 molar HCl. Okay, so that's hydrochloric acid. You'll recognize hydrochloric acid as a strong acid. And you know that if a strong acid is in solution, it's going to dissociate 100% to hydronium ion. So we could actually also represent this more simply or generically as 12 molar hydronium ion. Okay, so that's how I'm going to refer to it. <clears throat> All right. So here's the deal. 
when we add some of this strong acid to the original buffer solution, what's going to happen? Okay, so let's set this up in sort of a tabular form like we normally would, like an ice table. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the um, reaction that we had before that I just wrote up here, and I'm going to ask myself, if I'm going to add hydronium ion to this reaction, what's it going to react with? Okay, and you guys know it's going to react with the base part of the buffer. What's the base part of the buffer? Oh yeah, that's the NO2 one minus. Okay, so now I have a reaction associated with the goal of making the pH of the buffer lower. And here's the reaction. It's going to be the nitride ion, since that's the base part of the buffer, reacting with the acid that we're going to add that I'm going to represent as hydronium ion here. Okay, now this is a weak plus a strong thing. Okay, so a weak and a strong get mixed together. We can estimate that this reaction is going to go 100% to the right. Okay, you may or may not have heard of that in lecture, but that's what happens. And the reason for this is because we could show mathematically that the K value, the equilibrium constant for this reaction is extremely large. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, we're going to protonate the NO2, so we're going to make the acid back again. So we're going to get HNO2, and we're going to be left with water. Okay, so that's the result of this reaction. I'll just show the water there as a liquid. Okay, and if you look at this, you'll see that it's actually one over the Ka. In other words, it's one over the reaction that I wrote up above. Okay, so one over Ka is going to be a really big number because Ka's are really small numbers, and that's why we can assume this reaction goes 100% to completion. Now, since that's true, you guys might have used if tables, okay, in lecture. I like to represent them as ICF tables, and that basically means that a reaction is going to completion. So it's another way of just sort of representing a limiting reactant type situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my concentrations in from part one, okay? So if you go back to part one, the concentration of the nitrite ion that you calculated that you have to have in solution is 0.72 molar. Okay, the hydronium ion, we don't know how much of that we're going to have to add, so I'm going to put an X there. The uh, nitrous acid concentration from part one was represented as 1.78 molar. And again, go back through your calculations and make sure you see where that came from. Water doesn't show up in the law of mass action, so I get rid of it. Okay, so we're going to assume here that the hydronium ion is going to be the limiting reactant. And this makes sense because if it weren't, then we wouldn't have a buffer any longer, okay? In other words, we would exceed the capacity of the buffer. So I'm going to let this reaction go 100% to the right as governed by the limiting reactants. So that means we're going to lose X, we're going to lose X, and we're going to make X. Just like in the case of an ice table add down. 0.72 minus X, we're going to get a zero there for the hydronium, and we'll get 1.78 plus X, okay? Now, as it turns out, these numbers here that we get are important because what we're going to do is state that these are the final concentrations to readjust the buffer that we have to throw back into the henderson hasselbach equation to get that new pH of 2.80. All right, so we're going to come back to that in just a moment. But first of all, some of you guys are going to be in a situation where you're expected to go the other way. Your goal would be to actually raise the pH of the buffer. That's not the goal of the example problem, but you might be in a situation where you're asked to do this. Okay, so your new goal or alternative goal would be to raise the pH of the buffer. Let's just say, for example, from 3.0, they don't specify this in the problem, we're just making it up. To 3.20. Okay, so what if we wanted to raise the pH of the buffer? Well, now we'd actually have to add a strong base. Okay, so we're going in the opposite direction. And it turns out in the lab, the strong base that's going to be provided to you that would be available if you were actually doing this is 10 molar NaOH, sodium hydroxide. That's a strong hydroxide base. If you let it dissociate, you know, you could also represent it as 10 molar OH minus or hydroxide ion. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. So now think about the reaction that would have to happen. 
is going to kind of be a different reaction from the one that we just wrote in the case of trying to lower the pH, because now we're trying to raise it. So if I'm adding a strong base to the solution, what part of the buffer is it going to react with? Well, if we're adding a strong base, we know it's going to react with the acid part of the buffer. That's the HNO2. So let's rewrite the equation. Now we're going to let that react with hydroxide ion. Reaction is going to go 100% to the right. Again, because it's a weak thing reacting with a strong thing. And you could back calculate a K for this if you wanted to. And what you're going to do now is protonate the hydroxide. So you're going to get water. And you're also going to end up getting nitrate, or sorry, nitrite, NO2, 1 minus. Okay. So now we do the same thing. We would set up our ICF table to sort of see what the readjustment would have to be. In this case, we're going to start with the same concentrations of the acid and base. So the acid was 1.78 from part one. The base was going to be 0.72 molar. And again, remember, these are molar concentrations. We don't know how much hydroxide ion we'd have to add, so we'll make that an X. We're going to get water out. And again, we're going to assume that the hydroxide here is going to be the limiting reactant. So now working through this, we're going to lose X, we're going to lose X, we're going to make X on the right. So you get 1.78 minus X, you get zero and 0 0.72 plus X. So this is going to look a little different from what we got above, because now we're moving in the other direction, right? We're trying to actually raise the pH of the buffer. So now we're adding base and it's going to react with acid. All right, so that may be the situation that some of you guys have to deal with. So I wanted to show it to you. But now let's go back and take a look at what's going to happen with the original example. All right, so in the original example that we're trying to do here, let's remind ourselves of what we're trying to do. We're trying to change the pH of the buffer from 3.00 down to 2.80. And we're doing that by adding some amount of 12 molar HCl. Okay, so what we said we were going to do is keep the buffer condition here. So we still have a buffer. So I'm going to plug everything back into Henderson Hasselbach again. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in for the pH, the new pH that we want, which is 2.80. That's my new target, right? Now I'm going to plug in the pKa, which is the negative log of the Ka. That's constant. That doesn't change. So that's still 3.39. Okay, that's a property of the acid plus the log, base 10 log, of the base part of the buffer over the acid part of the buffer. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take our F line and we're going to plug the acid and base parts in. Now the base part goes on top, right? So that's the NO2 one minus. So that's going to become 0.72 minus X. All right. And then underneath of that, we're going to put the acid part. That's the HNO2 from the F line. So that's 1.78 plus X. Okay, so that should actually agree with what's in your lab handout. I think they basically take you to that point and say you need to show how you got there. So that's how you got there. All right, so now it's just a matter of doing algebra. We want to determine what X is because what X is going to represent here is going to be the concentration of the strong acid that I have to have in the buffer solution to affect this new pH of 2.80. Okay, so it's a simple matter of doing algebra. So I'm gonna bring the 3.39 to the other side. So I'm gonna get 2.80 minus 3.39. And that's gonna leave me with the log term over on the right. So I've got the log of 0 0.72 minus X. And that's gonna be divided by 1.78 plus X. Okay, so then when you work that out, what you're going to get is 10, or sorry, I don't want to do that yet. I'm going to exponentiate eventually, but let's leave that to a further step. Let's just take the difference first. I'm going to get minus 0.59. Okay, that's the difference between 2.80 and 3.39. And that's still going to equal to the log of... 0 0.72 minus X over 1.78 plus X, base over acid. All right, so now, since I'm trying to get X by itself, I need to undo that log. Okay, so very similarly to what we did in part one, 
I'm going to get rid of the log term by exponentiating both sides. That means use the 10 to the x key on your calculator. Okay, so I'm going to take 10 to the minus 0.59 power and 10 to the power of that whole log term. Okay, so 10 to the minus 0.59 power gives you 0.257. You should be able to verify that with your calculator. Now we're good to two sig figs there, so I'm going to underline that. And then when you exponentiate a log, it just undoes the log. Okay, so now what you've got is just the ratio, 0 0.72 minus x over 1.78 plus x. Okay, so now we're in a much simpler situation to be able to get x by itself, it's all for it. So now we're gonna basically multiply both sides by 1.78 plus x to get that out of the denominator. This is very similar to the math you did in the first part. And that's gonna leave us with 0.72 minus x. Like that. Now let's distribute the left-hand side. So 0.257 times 1.78 gives us 0.458. Keeping track of those sig figs there. Plus 0.257x. And that's all equal to 0.72 minus x. So now we just collect our x terms on one side and our non-x terms on the other side. So I'm going to take the x that's over here on the right over to the left. So it becomes a positive x and adds the to the 0.257x, which gives me 1.257x. Okay. And then on the other side, I am going to take the 0.72 and I'm going to take the 0.458 to the other side and subtract it, right? And when I end up doing that, I end up getting, let's see, I'm just going to write it out. Minus 0 0.458, right? So now I can go ahead and figure this out. So I'm going to get um, a situation where solving for the x, I think I end up getting, let's see, what do we get? There is the difference. I kind of did this out without actually doing it out. 0.72 minus 0.458. That turns out to be 0.262. OK, so now solve this thing for x. So x is going to equal to 0 0.262 divided by 1.257. Keeping track of my sig figs here. And that's going to end up giving me 0 0.208 um, molar HCl. Now keep in mind, this is the concentration of the hydronium ion or the HCl, however way you want to look at it, present in the buffer solution to make the new pH of 2.80 happen. Okay, But the real question now is, how much 12 molar HCl did I need to add to make that happen? When I say how much, we're talking about what volume. So I need to know what volume of the original HCl I had to put in there to affect that new X of 0 0.208 in the buffer. So I'm gonna use my dilution equation to do that. So remember that we can say that the molarity of the concentrated times the volume of the concentrated is equal to the molarity of the dilute times the volume of the dilute. In this case, I want the volume of the concentrated. That's the HCl I'm adding. So molarity of the dilute times the volume of the dilute divided by the molarity of the concentrated. So we have all those numbers now that we can plug in, right? So the molarity of the dilute is what we just figured out. It's the 0 0.208 molar. Okay, that's the molarity of the acid that's actually in the buffer as we prepared it to get the new pH, times the volume of the dilute. And we're gonna assume that 
um, the volumes don't add here. So that whatever volume of the concentrated I have to put in here is not gonna affect the final volume. So we're gonna leave that as it was at 0 0.50 liters. That was the um, volume of the um, buffer you were asked to prepare. And now the molarity of the concentrated we were given is 12 molar. Okay, so molar cancels with molar. We do our math. V concentrated turns out to be 0 0.0087 to the correct number of sig figs liters of 12 molar HCl. If we want to put it in terms of milliliters, we just multiply by 1,000 and we end up getting 8.7 milliliters of 12 molar HCl that I actually had to add to the buffer to affect the new pH of um, whatever it was, 2.80, okay? So that's how we would go through that calculation. And you're gonna go through a very, very similar calculation for your assigned buffer. Now I'm gonna give you some more instructions um, about how we're gonna run the lab. Um, those will come to you as written instructions, but make sure before you come to lab on Wednesday that you do go ahead and watch this video and make sure you can follow the calculations for both part one and part two, because that's exactly what we're gonna to have to do when we come to lab. All right, guys, be diligent, and I will see you on Wednesday.